Welcome. This is our third month in this series of talks. These talks are our way actually of finding meaning of the current issues that confront us in the situation of adversity. We give this as our blessing to the bigger society, blessings of insight, of creativity, and hope and courage. And I'd like to thank the faculty members of the Loyola schools and the professional schools who are participating in the series of talks this month for us. I'd like also to thank the University Research Council and the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering for putting together the talks. So again, welcome to Acts of Magis. Thank you for the privilege of having me introduce today's speaker. Dr. Asunta Kuyekeng is a professor of the Department of Leadership and Strategy of the John Gokong Way School of Management. She obtained her doctoral degree in chemistry from the University of Regensburg in Germany and her bachelor's and master's degrees in chemistry from Ateneo de Manila University. She is also director of the Ateneo Institute of Sustainability, the director of the ASEAN University Network on Ecological Education and Culture, and the managing editor of the Journal of Management for Global Sustainability. She has written on polymers, science education, environment, quality assurance, and leadership. Her literary essays, poems, and Filipino translations appear in various anthologies. A leader, a chemist, a strategic manager, a teacher, a poet, and a senior advisor to many of us, Please welcome Dr. Achut Kuyeke. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Acts of Magis, Athenians in the Service of Society. I am Chris Castillo, your moderator. Today's guest completes the lineup from our four Leola schools, but as you will hear later on from her presentation, while she is representing the John Gokongui School of Management, what she will be talking about expands much farther than that. So, without further ado, let's call in our guest presenter this afternoon, Dr. Achut Kuyagkeng. Good afternoon, Ma'am Achut. Hi, Chris. Good afternoon. How have you been, Ma'am? Okay. Doing yes. fine. Well, that, that's good to know. No? And, uh, well, Ma'am Achut and I get to work a bit on, on, on a variety of things. Uh, it's good to know she's been very active. All right. Uh, that's Ma'am Achut for you. So before we hear more about Doc Action's work, uh, we'd like to request our audience members, uh, both on the G, especially on the GMB uh, platform, to please keep your microphones off, as well as your video cameras for the duration of the program. We are coming to you live with this GMB, as well as the Ateneo Facebook account. So you may send your questions or comments through the GMB chat, or you may also send your comments and questions through the uh, Facebook comment section, and we'll pick them up later and relay them to Doc Achu. We'd like to thank the organizers of Acts of Magis. In particular, we'd like to thank the University Research Council, or URC, and the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering, or ARIT. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Dr. Asunta Kuyikeng. Thank you. And thank you for inviting me to participate in this series. Initially, I was very hesitant and I was daunted because unlike the previous speakers who are truly frontliners uh, in this pandemic, uh, we, are more of, uh, we are more involved in backroom operations. No? But I thought this was a good opportunity to get more people involved in what we do at the Ateneo of Sustainability as well as uh, with uh, John Gokongri School of Management. Um, sustainability can be a very abstract word for many, and some simply take it to be the quality of being able to continue over a period of time or the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level. But in both dictionaries, there's also a second meaning, and it has to do with the environment, the quality of causing little or no damage to the environment, the avoidance of depletion of natural resources, 
And uh, all of this in view of the long term. Um, but as you will see in our work, it is not just about continuing over a long period of time, nor is it limited to work on the environment. Um, sustainability recognizes that everything we do as members of society and participants in the economy are deeply connected with our natural environment. However, sustainability in the broad sense of the word is not just about being environment friendly. It is also about human, social, and economic dimensions, among others. Sustainability is such a big word nowadays that and it has morphed over time, but perhaps not all of us were able to keep up with the morphing of this word because in some cases, they were in areas outside our discipline or interest. Most environmental efforts credit the 1962 publication of Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, as the beginning of the environmental movement. But the concept of a sustainable world system first appeared in the Limits to Growth in the 1972 report of the Club of Rome, which was also the first attempt to use systems and feedback mechanisms to better understand the consequences of economic growth. It was a controversial document then because, well, it was a, a discussion and it lacked technological solutions on one hand. On the other, it did not talk about economic development. So in the next iterations of the concept, there were attempts to put back the idea of development in the context of sustainability. For example, in the 1972 conference of the United Nations on Human Environment, they tried to reconcile economic development with environmental integrity while considering human impacts on the environment. It also led, this conference led to the creation of the UN Environment Program, as well as national environmental protection agencies in many countries. In 1978, Ignacy Sachs developed this idea of eco-development, and he says this is an approach to development aimed at harmonizing social and economic objectives with ecologically sound management in a spirit of solidarity with future generations. So basically, you see that this already hints at the definition of sustainable development as we know it now. After several global crises, after the publication of the Limits to Growth, we had the OPEC oil crisis, an oil spill, the Three Mile Island accident, the nuclear accident in Pennsylvania, uh, Bhopal toxic chemical leak, drought in Ethiopia, the Antarctic ozone hole, climate change, and the prediction of global warming, and finally the Chernobyl nuclear station accident. Finally, sustainable development was defined. And it was defined in uh, the, the book or, or the report, Our Common Future. It, is, it was the, the 1987 report of the World Commission on Environment and Development, also known as the Brundtland Commission, uh, after its head, Grow Harlem Brundtland. The term sustainability, as it is understood nowadays, is practically synonymous to sustainable development, the development that, meet, that meets the needs of the present, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And this definition has been studied and expounded in many frameworks and theories. And what is common to all of them is that they consider the environmental, social, and economic conditions. I have taken pains to first define sustainability as it is understood nowadays, um, because it is what our work is all about. We are not just greening the campus or protecting wildlife and conserving energy, although those are very important in our work. It is also about understanding the system and how human activity, social issues like poverty and education, environment, uh, carbon footprint, economic concerns, all of these contribute to global and local conditions. And, we, and that's why we are also interested in these. 
sustainability can be abstract. So we try to translate sustainability into something concrete. Um, and this translates to university policy, degree programs, training and workshops, and so on. We have, for example, consulted with many different units and offices to come up with two university documents, the Ateneo Sustainability Guidelines uh, on your left here, and the Campus Emergency Management Plan, uh, both of which were launched by the Office of Human Research and uh, Organizational Development in June 2016. Um, aside from uh, this kind of, of policy work, we have also helped draw up interdisciplinary degree programs, both of which are housed now in the John Gokong Way School of Management. Um, the minor in sustainability and the master of science in sustainable development. And the thrust here is to help business become more sustainable. The logic is that if it works for business, they will do it even without the laws or even without the regulations because it works for them. So it is timely because the global sustainability view in business is also changing. Corporate or business sustainability has changed since uh, the 70s. Whereas in the decades up to the 70s, the focus was on financial and operational viability, uh, things have changed. But before, you know, during this time, um, Milton Friedman, who's a well-known economist, even had an article in the New York Times Magazine who said, and he said there, uh, the corporate responsibility, the social responsibility of a business is to make profit. But things have changed because uh, there has been pressure to uh, do uh, good to society. And so in the next iteration of corporate or business sustainability, it is a combination of financial oper and operational viability together with CSR or corporate social uh, responsibility. Um, this is important. The, uh, the way corporate social responsibility was handled uh, in, 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 even in the Philippines nowadays, you still have two separate units. One is in charge of the business unit and the other is in charge of the social responsibility. For example, a bank would go on tree planting uh, uh, initiative. So they, this, the corporate social responsibility has no real connection with the business operations itself. But the current uh, view of, uh, of uh, global business institutions has now shifted to understanding corporate sustainability as involving ESG practices. E for environment, S for social, and G for governance, or sometimes we know this as the people, profit, planet, uh, bottom line. So instead of just looking at profit, it looks at the triple bottom line, which was coined by the businessman John Elkington in 1994, and he discussed this more in his book, in his 1996 book, Cannibals Will Forks. Having said that, uh, to develop this kind of perspective of triple bottom line and, and uh, big system uh, perspective, we need to have an interdisciplinary approach. And so you will see that the minor in sustainability, for example, has the required courses coming from environmental science, from physics, and from decision science under James Song. The electives come from philosophy, social, so sociology, anthropology, um, economics, and so on. For the Master of Science in Sustainability Management, it's almost like an MS in management, but the thrust is really on looking at these functions, these business functions, from the lens of sustainability. So for example, we discuss principles of strategic management and see how uh, we can embed sustainability in it. Um, there is a course on systems thinking for sustainability, an introduction to uh, industrial ecology. The math department uh, uh, provides us with the, service, uh, with, with the courses on environmental finance. We have green accounting and so on. So it's a very, it, these are very interdisciplinary degree programs. But even our researches, uh, the, the researches that we have supported are also very interdisciplinary. 
Um, uh, one research is the assessment of water access in Bandi Bulacan, which we have done in collaboration with the Water Alliance of the Philippine Business for Social Progress. And as you will see, it involves faculty from economics, environmental science, ECCE, sociology and anthropology, political science, and our researchers and uh, our graduate students. Um, in business, our business research has uh, not really been on the big companies, but we are looking at the areas where we would have social impact. So, for example, one research is on profiling the disaster readiness of Philippine micro enterprises. So, uh, we worked on this together in, in collaboration with the Office of Social Concern and Involvement. And uh, um, you will see that we try to, to show, for example, value chain to micro entrepreneurs and uh, give them some ideas on sustainability. Another research is in partnership with the, At uh, the Ateneo Center for Social Entrepreneurship. This is the uh, Creating Social Value in Social Enterprises. We have an upcoming, a forthcoming case book based on this. And uh, we have actually involved a lot of our graduate students in both researches. And by making them part of our research groups, we, have, we hope that they can eventually continue uh, this kind of work in their own uh, researches and even in their own practice. To raise awareness on disaster literacy, we have engaged our stakeholders through trainings and workshops. Abby Favis, who is our uh, program manager for campus sustainability uh, from, and also faculty of environmental science, uh, together with her, we ran uh, disaster literacy workshops and uh, workshops for emergency response teams for the different units of Ateneo. But we've also partnered with uh, external groups like the Balara High School, and uh, we helped the uh, BGC develop their crisis management plan. More recently, Dr. Kendra Gotanka Gonzalez uh, ran workshops in partnership with Erasmus and the capacity building in Asia for resilient education. And, and also to heighten the emotional connection with the natural environment, Abby and Trinket Canlas Constantino of the biology department have been advocates of nature walks and citizen science. These have been very, very popular uh, through the, uh, the, at, at the Ateneo Wild uh, on social media. And, in, and they have also partnered with uh, our artist, uh, Ia Regalario, to come up with a set of coloring books. And they're not just coloring books, they're very informative. They tell you where to find these uh, birds and wildlife in, on the campus. And uh, we hope that this will create a connection uh, with, with our stakeholders and make, help them uh, to love more of uh, the environment. We have taken a, a look at these things and uh, we hope that the issues that we are studying will not be taken in isolation because taken in isolation, it defeats the whole point of sustainability. So we'd like, to, we'd like for people to see the systems as a whole instead of being enamored or focused with just one idea. And uh, we have done this with the help of the publication of the Ateneo Sustainability Reports. We for, we published the first one in July 2014, and then in early 27. And on July 27, watch out for it. We will be launching the third Ateneo Sustainability Report. It's coming very, very soon. Now, to ensure that people see the interconnections between different activities like research, institutional practices, um, and uh, our practical interventions, we try to make sure that the university initiatives are research-based and participatory. Uh, we have implemented several campus technologies and promoted environmental protection uh, uh, interventions and efficient use of resources through all of these types of research-based participatory programs. For example, the waste segregation that we do where uh, 
are very crucial uh, is very crucial to operate the materials recovery facility for the recyclables they help our maintenance teams to do that and also the vermicomposting um, facility where we use worms to um, to uh, manage the to convert the yard waste and a little bit of our kitchen waste to vermicast which is an organic fertilizer and this is also used for the campus, so we don't have to buy the artificial uh, fertilizers. We also have uh, many waste, zero, zero waste water initiatives. We try to use uh, the septic tank effluents, treat them, and uh, go uh, use them for irrigation. And I'll discuss this a bit more. We use rainwater uh, for uh, for various uh, um, purposes, for example, flushing and cleaning uh, sidewalks and stuff like that. But to give, to give you a, some idea how these are really very participatory and research-based, we have uh, um, embarked on, on several groups and developed the systems together with them. The first uh, initiative in 2008 was the Building Wastewater Treatment System. Um, and you found, it, it's found in the Marion Garden between Berkman's Hall and the chapel. And what it does it, is it uses the septic tank effluent from Berkman's Hall and uh, then use this, pass it through a drip irrigation system to, um, to uh, water the colorful flower garden that we had before. Uh, during, uh, these are pictures of the flowers we had during that time before the gardeners decided to shift to low maintenance plants. So I hope that we can eventually uh, populate them again with these beautiful flowers. Anyway, the system, this particular system for now is under repair, but we have similar facilities at the Mateo Ritchie Hall, the Ateneo Grade School, and the International Residence Halls. The BWATS, or the Building Wastewater Treatment System, is now a requirement for new buildings on campus. We also have the Decentralized Wastewater Treatment System, or the DWATS, that collects water from seven buildings, and they pass through um, a system uh, of anaerobic chambers and then go through a reed bed and eventually to a solar disinfection uh, area so that they can be used for irrigation, mainly of the football field. And we just add a Manila water uh, supply in case we, we lack uh, 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 wastewater, treated wastewater. By the way, these wastewater uh, have been tested for for to make sure that there are no pathogens uh, when we apply it to, to the grounds um, for the rainwater harvesting we have systems what you see here is the example for the new Rizal library or the Rizal library rainwater harvest harvesting system which is used to flush uh, the toilets in the Rizal library but you also have this in the Servini cafeteria and at the international residence halls um, for, for, and, and they've also been very useful there. And finally, we have this Ateneo traffic group uh, who took real pains in implementing sustainable mobility solutions, but only after so many consultations, numerous months of consultations. And you will see that it's not just about having uh, Egypts, but it's also about uh, having the, a walkable campus. So we tried to make walking on the campus more pleasant. You know? So mobility is not just about using vehicles, using, but, but, but using alternatives. So we have the bike lanes, etc. What has impressed me is that the people who were largely responsible for implementing these initiatives in 2008 have made this part of their advocacy and commitment. So we have here Abby, I've mentioned Abby several times, and this is Litsi Sumpaiko. They were the prime movers in the 2008 initiatives. And while Litsi has retired, Abby has continued with the same energy and passion as our AIS program for campus sustainability. The picture you on the right was taken from one of our, uh, we, we sometimes had ocular inspection of the grounds. And uh, you see here, uh, this is Mike. Uh, Kanlas and uh, architect Mike Kanlas designed some uh, and, and executed some of the interventions in the Leola schools and he has brought this mindset 
when he became director of the Central Facilities Management Office of the university. Engineer Eli Pan, I don't know if he's in the picture, but I think he's here with us. But Eli has also been part of Mike's team and he also brought this mindset when he was when he, he moved temporarily to the residence halls. He he was the one who built the rainwater harvesting at the Cervini cafeteria and now he's back with the Leola schools continuing our sustainability projects under the leadership of uh, Joy, Miss Joy Salita, who was already uh, in 2008 our director for the Office of Administrative Services and she was the one supervising Mike and Ellie. Uh, and now she continues the work um, as um, Associate Dean for uh, Student and Administrative Services. Then here you see a bit chick, uh, Di Malanta, who was the champion for environmental initiatives in the Ateneo grade school. Together with Abby, they started uh, initiatives in the grade school in 2010. And she's brought this advocacy with her now as she leads the Ateneo senior high school. And there are others who may not explicitly carry functions, but who have been touched by the need to address changes in our lifestyle. I really appreciate the struggles of our administrators who have approached me with their dilemma. Uh, they want to push sustainability concerns, but there is the need to respond to the clamor of stakeholders. So there is on the one side the ecological footprint, but also on the other, the service that you have to give for uh, our students, faculty, staff, and administrators. I think for those of us who have spent a good deal of time and energy in implementing these initiatives and communicating with members of our community, sustainability is not just a task or a deliverable. It is about connecting people so that this idea can be lived, integrated in our values, be part of what moves us and make sense of our lives. It is opening doors for stakeholders so that we may see that this is actually what we are called to do and be. Most of our examples uh, have been about things to do, not about things for being. But more than that, we hope that when people go through these efforts, uh, that we might be able to internalize what we are doing and so that this can become part of our second nature, part of our lifestyle, and eventually part of who we are. In all of these, with our external, even with our external partners, the work is made worthwhile when we see that there are participants who develop insights or commitment to a particular aspect of sustainability. One participant in our sustainability workshop for a retail company was a, a young salesperson, and she was very candid about her habits when we were going through the exercises. And Sabi niya, tinapon ko lang kahit saan yung wrapper ng pagkain. Hindi ko na yun uulitin. So, it, it's like, an, it, it's, it, it was a very sincere statement. Very simple, but I thought, wow, it, it, it's good for people to actually see the connections in, in their own personal lives. And then in, in one of the workshops we had as part of our profiling research, uh, disaster readiness in micro uh, enterprises, a Sari Sari store owner, who was part of the research and workshop, was enlightened when she better understood her value chain uh, and its uh, relation to disaster preparedness. And so she said, Gusto pong ibahagi ito sa aking mga kasama para mas makapaghanda kami ng nararapat. We are in different positions and at different uh, places in our lives. But I think the challenge for each one of us is to truly grasp the com concept that we are living in a shared world. The concept of a common home is what uh, Pope Francis put in his encyclical Laudato Si. But the concept of common home can be very difficult to understand because we have become attached and even protective of our personal rights, uh, property, and private space. Often there is much talk of rights, but too little talk of responsibility. There is a lot of talk about security, why we have to keep our gates closed and our walls high, but there is too little talk of building trust. 
when Pope Francis wrote about Laudato Si, when he wrote Laudato Si, it, is, it was with that intention to help us see that we need to care for our common home by taking responsibility, by respecting every person and creature, by developing a spirituality that connects us with creation and with the Creator. In his speech in the UN in September 2015, four months after the encyclical was released, he reminded us once again. He said, first, it must be stated that the true right of the environment does exist for two reasons. First, because we are human beings and we are part of that environment, and therefore any harm done to the environment is harm done to humanity. And second, because every creature, particularly a living creature, has intrinsic value. So that in all religions, the environment is a fundamental good. This is probably what the spirituality of sustainability means. We are called in mysterious ways to embark on this journey. It could be a connection to trees and wildlife, a desire to solve the problem of single-use plastics, a commitment to help defeat poverty, a passion to be of service to a community. Whatever road we took, we tried to move forward to reach something much bigger than us. Sometimes we got weary, sometimes we got lost, but just like a pilgrim trying to reach that sacred destination, um, we plod forward. Our efforts in the past, in, in, in our sustainability efforts, these are all part of this pilgrimage towards something sacred. Because each effort deepens the connection between us, creation, and the Creator. And if you have tried going on a pilgrimage, you also realize that it is not the destination that makes it sacred. It is the journey itself that transforms the pilgrim if the person allows the spirit to enter. From an Ignatian perspective, it comes from a deep understanding that God loved us first. God loves us in big ways, gave humanity the chance to experience the world. But God also loves us individually. God finds us, God touches our lives, and walks with us in whatever path we take. The theme of the Ateneo 2020 Ignatian Festival is one foot race, ready for mission, ready for others, ready for tomorrow. St. Ignatius reminds us the laborers in the Lord's vineyard should have one foot on the ground and the other raised to proceed on their journey. Thus he challenges us as Athenians to raise one foot to go where we are called, whether it's environmental protection, ecological education, social innovation, human development, economic development, social justice, and so on. Often we do not actually know where the road will take us, but we forge ahead with persistence and courage and with the humility to, to surrender ourselves to be transformed by the journey. Ignatius challenges us to be ready for others, to engage other pilgrims on the journey, to support each other, to build better connections and use the connections to be of service to others. Ignatius challenges us to shape the future we always return to the fact that this universe, this planet, is a gift. A gift that is meant to be shared and cared for. The call is to restore our relationship with creation through our lifestyle choices and actions. And it is through these choices that we can shape the future. We can shape tomorrow. And so we raise one foot maybe in baby steps, maybe in big strides, in this journey towards something sacred, towards something much bigger than us. But as in most pilgrimages, we do not walk alone. We walk with companions who will help us shape tomorrow. And above all, we walk with the one who loved us first. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc Atshut. Um, at this point, typically, you know, if, if we work together in, in, in Lyon Hall, for example, you could be a lot of applause. So, but for now, please accept these acts of Majesty Hard. <laughs> uh, these are for you, man. Thank you. Thank you. And to 
to our audience, as we had mentioned earlier, you know, while Ma'am Achoot was in, is representing JG Song this afternoon, based on the talk, indeed, I touched on so many points. So we invite you to please post your, your questions or comments. Uh, for those who are here in the G Meet, you may use the chat now. Uh, and uh, I guess you may also turn on your cameras at this point, no? so Doc Achoot could also see uh, your, your smiling faces. And we'll also get some questions from the Facebook live feed. So, but uh, I think we, we, we gathered a few earlier and we'll start with some. Is that okay, Mama? Sorry, can you repeat that again? I didn't catch that. Yeah, maybe, maybe start with some of the questions? Yeah, sure. 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 Okay, ma'am. So, uh, you mentioned sometimes people get enamored or focused on a particular sustainability issue. Uh, well, what did you mean by that? And what is the danger when sustainability issues are taken in, in isolation? Well, you see, sometimes uh, we, get, we, we get attached to a particular idea and we forget that there is a bigger picture uh, connected uh, to it. No? Uh, there are many examples, but uh, one, one thing uh, stuck with me for a while because I remember when the JG Song Forest was... Uh, when, when people saw that some of the trees were <laughs> going to be cut down, people were very, were very upset. And we, are, we, you know, we understand that. We love trees. We love trees very much. But um, uh, we are not very happy with our mahogany trees because they were actually, uh, it's actually a very invasive species. And um, when you put them along walkways, and over parking lots, they can be quite dangerous because the pods are heavy, you know. And uh, there's a pointed part of that pod, so it's it's really it's very dangerous. But sometimes people cannot understand why we have to remove some of the trees, um, and and so it, it's taken only from that very tree hugger uh, perspective. But they forget that there well there are people who might be affected by by this particular tree you know so we, we we think a lot about these things before we do it in fact uh the other species uh would have to be bald but um there are certain species that are not even really good in the setting maybe it's good in in you know if you're if you're using it to to build furniture or something like that uh and, and that's your business but uh it, it sometimes is taking it from a very narrow perspective or sometimes, for example, if you want to uh, protect certain trees uh, for, uh, and, and, the, and the dilemma is between that and building a road that will help farmers in a remote area to get their produce to, to, the, to the consumers, um, it's a very difficult dilemma, actually. And, and uh, that dilemma, there are no clear answers and that's why it, it's not really just being environment friendly we have to think of people we have to think about how it will affect their lives but also as much as possible protect the environment so it's it's a systems thinking approach that we try to espouse so thank you very much understanding the different aspects of of, of the problem yes ma'am i guess one, one way you had also depicted that earlier in your presentation was the triple bottom line, yeah. the three P's. Yes. Now, now, well, taking off from that question and in your answer to it, uh, you were saying that sustainability is not just about the environment, but most people still think of environment as equivalent no, to sustainability. So how else can we really nuance that? How can we change that? In a sense, it's good that they're thinking of the environment, but I think it's a, a matter of broadening the perspective because people really have to see the connections and that it's a very, it's actually not a static re, a relationship with the environment. There is really, uh, there is really a, a feedback mechanism, you know, uh, in uh, when I first came to JG Som, it was big who introduced me to systems dynamics and systems modeling and I, I was so happy to, to learn to learn that no? and and that's the kind of thinking that we need to to have in order to make proper uh, decisions uh, not just to see one particular aspect but uh, the, the different aspects so for example some people 
uh, I, I, I went to the dentist uh, because um, I, had, I had to have a, a tooth check and uh, she was very she was very conscious that he said I had no choice but to, to get to get all of these uh, single uh, plastics for for her for her um, patients and I said that's all right because you're thinking of their health no I, I think the challenge is what do you do with them afterwards but there are certain areas like in health uh, you you have no choice uh, that you you have to be able to change this otherwise the health of people are are, are sacrificed but having said that what do you do with the waste you know uh, we we don't invest enough in recycling plants here in the philippines we do not we do not plan ahead uh, so that uh, we use design thinking to say okay this is how we will plan uh, this is we're going to produce this but this is what we will do so that we can minimize the waste and become more efficient. So it's really a big picture approach. Um, it's important that people recognize the role of environment, but it has to be a little bit more than that. Thank you, ma'am. So far in our G chat, uh, and if, if in case you can see it, ma'am, uh, there are pretty much uh, statements of appreciation and, and thanks uh, for, for your talk. Same similar with, with our comments on Facebook, but there is this one question from Mr. Francis Kimba. All right, uh, I, I, he's an alumna, alumnus of ours. Right? And he says, uh, well, these are very good studies, but uh, have the findings of the sustainability of SMEs and disaster study been shared to policymakers or presented in policy fora? So I guess it, to, to paraphrase, have these findings been brought to the attention of our government? Yeah. So actually, we're we're doing the uh, we're, there's a part two of these researches. We just finished the part two of uh, both, and uh, no, yeah, no, the uh, the one for social enterprises. The second the second part is still ongoing. Uh, we do intend to um, to publish some of them. Uh, we will probably we will try to go into policy. Uh, but I think those who work with me know that I am a little bit skeptical about uh, talking to lawmakers, and that's why our approach is really, if you saw our, our degree programs on business, our, the approach really is to see that it will work for people so that they will do it, whether it's business or individuals. People have to see what is in it for them. I think... Uh, our experience, well, my experience with policies, you can work a lot and uh, you can have laws, but sometimes uh, just with uh, one administration, all those, all those laws could be over, uh, there's a, they, 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 they'll be uh, neglected. Uh, so for me, it's really, I guess I've taken that more pragmatic approach over the many years that I have been trying to work with uh, with government groups. I I think I, I I know that individuals when they see the need for it or, or groups civic groups are actually quite effective in doing it. Or let's say the LGUs if they really put their heart to it, they're actually more effective than. Then policy, sorry, but this is my own personal take. I'm not saying that policy is not important. It is. It's just that um, I'm not so sure how our work will will fall on on the ears of our lawmakers. I'm I'm very very skeptical about that. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I, I'm sure, ma'am, many of us uh, share the same sentiment, and which is why. Uh, it, it all begins, I think, no, part of what you mentioned earlier, it really begins with an individual conviction uh, to, do, to pursue these. But on, on that note, ma'am, you also mentioned in, in your talk that a lot of um, consultations have to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, you take pains you know, to, to, to talk to different stakeholders, even if your team, the AIS team, uh, and shout out to the team, Abby Fabius, I know is here also watching us. Uh, we have already concrete ideas to solve the problem, and but just the same, you go through the rigor and then the trouble of consulting. Um, why do you do that, ma'am? Well, first of all, because uh, uh, I think 
all the most of the experiences in sustainability will 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 show that stakeholder engagement is very important. And our experience is that sometimes they see things that we don't. So sometimes we have an answer, but then they tell us what, how it will affect them on the ground. And so, okay, so then we realize, okay, that won't work. Let's, let's shift it a little bit. So the, the stakeholder feedback is very important in that way because then you can fine tune it so that uh, the, the intervention can be more responsive. But also our experience is that the consultation is a very effective way for the buy-in of, uh, of our partners. And in the end, that's very important because it's not we who will, uh, who will implement the, the interventions. Most often it is, um, it, it is the, the units, for example, the offices. And we have to hear what their real difficulties would be and how we can help them. So... If, if we see that we uh, that it's being addressed, then it sometimes is easier to get things off off the ground, and and usually that's much better than having a top down approach and then spending all your time uh, fighting fire. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And then towards the tail end of your presentation, you, you touched on spirituality. Thank you for that. Um, how do you think does involvement in sustainability initiatives actually help persons deepen, deepen their spirituality? Um, I remember uh, in the first sustainability report, uh, we part of the survey really showed that as uh, student engagement, I, I think Pindi Mendiola wrote a paper on this, uh, student, uh, students are, are find uh, that they can be more engaged. Uh, if, if they were engaged, they find it more meaningful. So having, uh, being part of that initiative, usually, well, initially it's a do task. But at some point, then, then you, ask, you start asking questions like, uh, do I really need a straw? Do I really need to, to use single-use plastics? Do I really need to go to the center to, to know the face of poverty? And so both questions eventually uh, make you reflect on, on your own personal, on your own personal values. Um, there's no one size fits all approach to this, but I think people who become receptive to it are, are called in different ways because they do it. So one of the cases that we will be, that we are featuring in the first case book that we hope will be published soon is a social entrepreneur who who did this work um, because of her praxis uh, in in Bayatas and the exposure simply helped her, you know, see what what is happening on the ground, and they developed a social enterprise out of that. and And you see that it has become very much part of of who she is, uh, uh, making sure that uh, she she addresses the needs of community and so on. So it's not just about environment. For others, it, they start with the nature walk and citizen science, but after, after you know, even with the cats. But at, I think at a certain point, you, you understand that, okay, this, the, this activity on trees or cats or disaster, is, it's really linked with something much bigger. And so you understand that you are part of, of something bigger, creation. Uh, you cannot solve disaster without looking at what caused it, and this can be caused by so many, so many other things in, in the system. No? And and uh, that 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 I think is is already deep, starting to deepen the insight, and and then comes eventually uh, the person may or may not, but eventually then it, the conviction will come to do something about. Uh, well, I hope you wouldn't mind. This is a bit of a personal question for you. Yeah. Um, having, well, many people know you, you know, of course, Dr. Viking, how, how strong you are as an individual, how courageous you are as an individual. But this type of work is un definitely very challenging. Maybe you could share with us uh, what is it that sustains you to keep on doing this type of work to even, you know, spread the advocacy to as many as possible. 
what sustains you, Mama Chi? Well, first and foremost, I think it is part of what uh, God calls us to do because this is His world. This is God's world, and and it's being shared with us. And I, I really see that very deeply. Uh, every day is a gift. Every every creature is a gift, and and you you get especially when we were reflecting uh, during this time of the pandemic when we had time for reflection. All the more, this has been very strong uh, that commitment. But I think what sustains me aside from that, uh, it, it's nice to talk about that. But uh, it's it sometimes it's very difficult to talk to God. Uh, all the time, you know, uh, uh, there have been times when, uh, you know, it sometimes is, you don't see that all the time, okay? So the importance of people around is very important. And I'm really inspired by the people I work with. Um, I have, a, you know, we have a very good team uh, in, in the Ateneo Institute of Sustainability. For, for many years, we were all women. But we're very happy that Randy has finally joined us. Uh, and uh, so we it, it's been very gratifying to have worked all these years with Abby and now with Kendra, before with Gemma. So very gratifying to work with uh, like-minded people who have uh, similar interests, not always the same, but very similar interests. In JG Som, it, it's just very inspiring to work with people who are very willing to learn so our research group, Raquel and Bong and um, uh, Anna Tan and uh, our graduate students, uh, they have been very, very much part of the support system that we have. And it's also very fulfilling to see that uh, um, something, something can happen out of it. Like, for example, uh, this is something relatively new. Uh, our first graduates of the MS uh, in sustainability management. Some of them are in sustainability work, and um, three of them are actually helping put together uh, an organization for sustainability practitioners in business and well, in academe. But they, they are they are really involved with the business groups as well. So it's very heartwarming to see that they are moving in that direction, and uh, it, it still will take some time, but. But to see them becoming leaders and being, going to be leaders of the future, uh, that, that leaders in the industry are also turning to them because they have the technical know-how now. Uh, the, my, for example, is with SM Sustainability and, and uh, she has become a very big pillar for, for, for that SM Sustainability too. So it's, it's, uh, it's very heartwarming to work with people who have uh, who, are, who are very passionate and very committed to what they do. Thank you, ma'am. And if, if I may point out that from, from my observation, uh, I, I sincere I feel the sincerity in, in what you had said. Uh, for you were one of the presenters who had mentioned so many individual needs as you were talking about the work that had been done. Uh, I guess because you share the credit for one and for another. It, Acknowledge the good that they have done, and that you are not just like-minded; you are like-hearted people. Mm, yeah. Thank you very much, ma'am. It's it's impossible to do these interventions if you just are a small group. I mean, it takes a village, literally, to to do <laughs> things like this. Yes, ma'am. So we'll, we'll close with one last question, ma'am. From a well, the the one who sent the question had asked me to keep. Uh, the name anonymous, <laughs> but ang uh, pinapasabi po niya is some uh, she. Uh, I'll give a clue. She is someone who respects and trusts you a lot and loves you to bits. Okay, but the question, ma'am, uh, well, in your work as an administrator and you've been doing a lot of uh, work as an administrator advocating sustainability, uh, what has been an effective approach for you to balance? You know, to balance the push and the pull between culture and strategy. Always the consultation, always the communication, the dialogue. You have to listen to each other, and uh, it's been very effective. Uh, we've changed our mind on certain things because we really saw uh, the need of the other side as well. 
So we spend a lot of time in you know dialoguing and trying. You have to be creative as well because sometimes uh, if you both stand strongly on on what you want, uh, you have to get out of that mindset. And and sometimes I have to remind uh, some people, okay, let let's let's do it this way. Maybe we can solve it this way. Uh, we also have to understand the other side of of, of the coin and. And therefore, you have to be very creative looking for looking for solutions. So, for example, okay, I'll I'll give you this as an example. Um, you know, uh, we're seen as the bad guys for air conditioning, and I think many people see us. We're, we're not actually the ones, but I think people think, okay, it's not good to have air conditioning, even if people think it's the bad school. But we also saw the need, for example, because the way the the Ateneo grade school is structured. Yeah? So on the one hand, there was this difficulty of, you know, because once you start allowing a, a unit to have all air-conditioned classrooms, then everybody else will follow. So that was our big dilemma. What do we do with it? So um, we ended up saying, okay, uh, maybe you really need it. But then why don't you invest first in solar panels so that the footprint decreases? Okay? So, I mean, if it were not for the pandemic, we would have been installing our solar panels soon. But um, that, that, that would have, you know, you have to look for other ways to solve the problem. Maybe not according to what you initially intended, but you have to also listen to what, what the other people need. So I says, so I say, it's really a balancing. Thank you, Mama. So that's that's consultation, dialogue, listening, and creativity. Yeah. So, so well, with that again, Mama, we'd like to give you. Well, I'm sure if, if people can unmute their their microphones at this point and just clap from their homes, I'm sure, Mama, as she deserves that. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounded very, very, very nice. No? All the <laughs> sounded very nice. Uh, but maybe I have a closing message from you. Oh, very difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think it's uh, it's a blessing to to have this kind of of a campus to have this kind of a world around us even even with this pandemic i think uh by by seeing that every day in our life is a gift by seeing that what we have is a gift then maybe we will have a different way of looking at things and that this is really a world that can be shared and i think by seeing it also as a gift it's an invitation to open our hearts to open our our you know, our soul to the spirit and become, and listen more, to become more present in the world that we have today, to actually sense uh, what we are called to do, what uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't know how to phrase it, but it's, these things do not come because we force ourselves to think of it, but if you're open to the spirit, the grace comes, and w when when that grace comes, then then it changes our who we are. You know, I think those of you who know me as a younger person will know me as a uh, uh, you know intimidating. Well, I still can be intimidating, but I used to be a very intimidating teacher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think the, the, that grace uh, helps me to listen better help me to communicate better. And so I think it's an invitation to everyone also because it, it improves who we are. I think it's it's in response also to what God called us to do. Thank you. And thank you very much, ma'am, for, for sharing those graces with us as well. So to the audience, thank you for joining us. If you want to see the, the previous episodes of Acts of Magis, you may find those as well as this particular episode in other works of our guests uh, at artium.ateneo.edu. So it's a great way to end this afternoon. 
uh, to end this week, and we thank again Doc Ashwood for spending her time with us. This is Chris Castillo, and this is Acts of Magic, Anidians, and the Service of Society. Thank you, and God bless you.